Thank you so much for taking the time to join us for this conversation about digital sovereignty and how Google Cloud can help organizations worldwide in supporting sovereignty requirements. I'm Archana Ramamurthy, a product manager focusing on building compliance, trust, and privacy products for our customers. And I'm joined by my colleague and friend, Christopher Johnson, who goes by CJ. Hi, I'm CJ, and I lead the digital sovereignty product management efforts at GCP. It's so exciting to have this discussion with you today. Today, we'll take a look at the global sovereign landscape dive a little deeper into how Google Cloud looks at digital sovereignty and the various solutions that we actually offer to solve some of those problems, and discuss some best practices with you that you can leverage as you think about your cloud implementations for your most critical workloads with sovereignty requirements. All right, let's start by looking at the evolving global sovereignty landscape. Today, organizations around the world are using cloud services to drive innovation, the security, scale, sustainability, and innovation offered by cloud platforms is well understood. But customers are often wonder how to balance these benefits with their compliance and sovereignty needs. So what is digital sovereignty? It depends on who you ask. There's no consensus definition. But we can define it as the ability of a state or entity to regulate or exert control over data, technology, operating within its own jurisdiction. The growing demand for digital sovereignty is rooted in a number of concerns. And these are not just about technology. They include security and control. What we're talking about here is the regulatory environment related to cloud. It's very dynamic, and we see an overall trend in the di direction of global strategic autonomy and digital sovereignty. When we tune into locations like Europe, there's a desire for stronger control over cloud data and software, and we see this trend expanding globally. We see regulations like GDPR, initiatives like Gaia-X, and other efforts to define how cloud companies operate and run their infrastructure and host workloads in the EU and beyond. The other area that we're looking at is economic. Building on top of number one, there's a strong desire to see local players getting involved in supporting some of these initiatives in order to avoid lock-in, develop and strengthen local economies, and to exert more control over extraterritorial data access requests. And finally, geopolitical. Policymakers, business leaders, and technology leaders have vested interest in defining the sovereign policies in their countries as they see more data migrating from on-prem solutions to the cloud. When bringing national critical infrastructure to the cloud, for example, there's always the question of the degree to which they can trust foreign cloud providers with sensitive data and therefore a strong need to have guidelines, governance, and policies to regulate how data is stored and managed. More recently, the situation in Ukraine has also resurfaced the importance of having solutions that can survive the unexpected, such as disruptive events like conflicts or embargoes. So our goal is to be able to align very, very closely with these local market needs and basically deliver solutions that support these different kinds of demands that CJ mentioned. Our overall goal is to meet customers where they are. And we want to do this while at the same time sort of seeking to avoid issues of fragmentation and disruption to existing infrastructure. So for example, the development of railways in the 19th century drove tremendous industrial progress and growth. However, the creation of different rail sizing standards in each country or region sort of led to the break of gauge. Um, and these issues when trains reach national borders, these added delays, cost inconveniences, and of course was you know, a lot of cost for different countries. We know that decisions that organizations and governments make today will have a huge impact far into the future. So they must be very thoughtfully and carefully sort of considered. Um, so for example, we want to be able to support local sovereignty without allowing digital fragmentation. We want to provide organizations with an easy way to expand their business globally. And all of this while ensuring that the short-term pressure does not lead to undesirable long-term implications. All right, we started our digital sovereignty journey in one of the most mature markets that understands values and sovereignty, the EU, back in 2019. In the past few years, we've learned a lot, talking to customers, working with partners, policymakers, and local governments, understanding the key needs of this region and delivering cloud on Europe's terms. A set of carefully ta tailored solutions put together with local partners to truly bring the value of Google Cloud in a format that's acceptable by, for our global customers, starting with Europe. 
So really what we're trying to do here is give cloud on your terms from a sovereignty perspective. Now we're expanding out further to deliver robust solutions in other parts of the world, bringing cloud on your terms for your unique business needs and regulatory requirements. That's very exciting. Now, as we mentioned, achieving digital sovereignty can mean different things to different people. One common theme that we hear a lot is having control over your data. Data is, of course, the most important asset in the digital world, and we believe that having strong controls is fundamental to meeting sovereignty requirements. In our mind, there are three fundamental control objectives. There's data residency, personal controls, and encryption control. But data controls are just one element of a comprehensive approach to digital sovereignty. At Google Cloud, we've therefore broken down digital sovereignty into three distinct pillars. Starts with data sovereignty. This is giving customers full control over core customer content. And we want to provide the ability to store and manage encryption keys outside of the cloud environment. All of this so that customers can protect their data while enjoying the scale, the security, and innovation quotient that you get with public cloud. The second is operational sovereignty. This is going one step above data sovereignty and gives customers or their trusted local partners direct visibility and, if needed, even control over Google Cloud's operations. The ability to limit and control access for support personnel based on predefined attributes, and you can think of these as citizenship attributes or a particular geographic location, could be core to trusting cloud providers with your most sensitive data. And last but not least, there's software sovereignty. And this is often referred to as survivability in a lot of cases. And this means the protection against unforeseen catastrophic events. And we believe that software sovereignty and survivability can only be accomplished with a modern open cloud approach that's truly based on open source solutions. And this is why Google has committed very, very strongly to an open cloud and we have based many of our core cloud services in computing and data management on open source solutions. So how do we actually pull this off? The simple answer is with the help of local partners. We're really excited about this. While we've built a global platform with many of the controls and capabilities organizations can use to meet their objectives for security, control, and transparency, our goal is to be able to deliver a localized portfolio of digital sovereignty solutions by understanding the local needs and requirements for various countries by partnering very closely with local partners to help bring these products to our customers. So let's take a closer look at the types of solutions that we can offer and how we have already started on implementing these in many of the countries that we're talking about. Our solutions are built on a secure by design and secure by default infrastructure foundation on Google Cloud. On top of this foundation, our cloud platform offers a wealth of controls that every organization using it can take advantage of. So for example, data security using third-party validated crypto. We also offer confidential computing to encrypt data in use for GCE and GKE and other services. Next, security monitoring and operations. These include strong access transparency and approval mechanisms. Identity and access management, for example, we based on zero trust principles for today's parameterless world. And building on top of these core controls that CJ just talked about, we offer a portfolio of sovereign solutions to support the various sovereignty needs of our customers, depending on the type and sensitivity of the data that they're actually looking to bring into the cloud. So let's look at each of these options. Our sovereign controls product allows you to define the location of your core data, who has access to your core data, and control of your encryption keys. And without all three technical controls, you don't have data sovereignty. You can also choose to apply GCP's core platform controls to your data. And these are controls such as DLP to de-identify data and confidential computing to encrypt data while it is in use in various services. The Partner Managed Sovereign Controls product actually adds the ability for a partner to monitor and control Google Access all of this to data, providing both visibility and control over the operational elements that you care about. Our supervised cloud offering, when this becomes available, will be fully managed and operated by a partner, supporting data and operational sovereignty needs for specialized and highly sensitive data. And lastly, for situations where there's a strong need to have less reliance on a software provider, 
our hosted cloud offering will support software sovereignty and basically allow for air-gapped and disconnected operations without provider software or support. And we do this in conjunction with well-trusted local partners. For example, as part of, part of our initiative to deliver cloud on Europe's terms, we have worked with SENS in France and T-Systems in Germany to deliver sovereign solutions powered by Google Cloud. Let's dive into the details of our sovereign controls by partners offered in the EU. Sovereign controls allow you to keep your data in a given geography. This is where we allow for data residency, and this includes uh, as well as store and manage your encryption keys outside of Google's infrastructure and fully control access to them through external key management with key access justifications. And finally, our European support feature allows customers to ensure that only EU persons in the EU, when you need help, are the ones that support you. Together, these three products combine to form a strong offering that is offered in conjunction with our local partners to support the sovereignty needs of our customers. And with Supervised Cloud, our goal is to be able to combine the strengths of the Google Cloud platform with the operational capabilities of local partners to support some of the strictest data and operational sovereignty needs that we see. And we're currently in the process of designing and building this offering with local partners both in France and Germany. While the controls that we've discussed so far address the majority of the market needs, we've also heard that there are some customers and workloads that have a very strict requirement to support air-gapped, disconnected operations. For example, this may be the case for some national government workloads. For these workloads, we'll offer hosted cloud services, which are part of Google Cloud's distributed cloud offerings. And hosted cloud services run on Anthos, Google Cloud's managed application platform, supporting containers and VMs on top of a prescriptive off-the-shelf hardware stack. While the hosted cloud provides a centralized control plane for cluster management, networking, and config and policy management, the control plane does not need to be connected to Google Cloud to actually function. Thus, it can support the specific needs for an air gap solution. And because running hosted cloud services requires strong operational expertise, partners will play a significant role in the delivery of this. Let's now hear from Ali, who represents our partner in Germany, T-Systems, on how they're able to support demands of their local market with the spec spectrum of solutions they're offering tailored for Germany today. Hi, my name is Oliver, and I'm leading the global Google business at T-Systems. T-Systems and Google Cloud are building and delivering sovereign cloud services for European enterprises, for the public and business sector. Our common goal, support all organizations in migrating their workloads to the cloud through more innovation, flexibility, performance and security. With sovereign controls by T-Systems, we have developed a cloud solution that allows you to securely host your sensitive data and implement supplementary data protection measures that help you to meet the requirements of European data protection authorities without losing on scalability nor elasticity. In other words, you as customer retain full control over your data, the software and operations, and still benefit from all the advantages of Google Cloud, especially the innovation power. As every cloud migration requires continuous optimization, our partnership additionally includes a commitment to co-innovation. Every day, dedicated teams of engineers are collaborating on open source technology solutions to stay ahead of the changing demand of digital markets in Europe and beyond. And doing so, you as customer always meet the demand of data, operational and software sovereignty for your business. Thanks, Ali. Let's also hear from Cyprian, who represents our partner SENS in France, in how we're working together to help support French regulatory requirements. Hi, everyone. I'm Cyprien Falk, CEO of SENS, the joint venture created recently between Thales and Google Cloud. SENS' mission is to help public and private organizations benefit from the power of Google Cloud while protecting their sensitive data in line with the French trusted cloud requirements defined in the second cloud label by France's National Information Systems Security Agency, ANSI. The creation of SENSE, the definition and build of our trusted cloud offering, 
and the availability of our first offer, Local Controls with Sense, this year, are the results of many months of collaboration between Thales and Google Cloud Teams. Our Local Controls offering is the first step this year, before we can offer a solution compliant with all the French Trusted Cloud criteria, which we are working on in parallel. Our objective is to be among the first to make such an offering available for certification based on a hyperscale cloud technology. Local Controls with Sense enables our customers to start their journey to the cloud now and begin their digital transformation process. Now that we've directly heard from our partners about how these solutions work in real life to solve customer problems, let's take a look at some of the best practices to keep in mind when navigating through your sovereign journey. One thing to keep in mind is that one solution doesn't fit all of the workload needs. It's important to distinguish and understand what is needed for your specific use case, your application, and the kind of data that you want to bring to the cloud. That will prepare you to make the right trade-offs when it comes to choosing technology solutions. Second, think about how hands-on you actually want to be in this process. Understanding how you plan to manage operational complexity is key to deciding how to handle sovereignty with your cloud provider and whether it may make sense to work with a trusted third party in this entire process. And lastly, think about your business needs for the future. This is important in order to understand the right path for your digital transformation journey. Thank you so much for joining us today and enjoy the rest of the sessions at Next 2022.